So in another video, I went through pretty quickly what a process to model a spray can holder looks like, but let's do it in detail in this video for anyone who has further questions. Here we go. We'll assume that all of our cans have a diameter of 2.6 and a height of about 8. So let's get started by sketching on the XY plane. And I can choose this option of rectangle by center. I'll put that center right on the origin and we can establish some dimensions. I'll put a horizontal dimension on uh, this line here, 0.25 ought to be good, and 0.6 here. I'll add a horizontal element to one of my rectangle elements and that fully constrains everything. So we'll deactivate our sketch. Uh, I also want to make an axis to uh, revolve around, both revolve and helix around. And so I'll make a plane to mark where the axis goes. Uh, I'll actually clear my sketch and choose my YZ plane instead. Let's say that our can fits within a circular diameter of 2.65. So I can say 2.65, of course, I want the axis to be half of that because it's in the middle. So I'm going to divide that by two and I'll put that in parentheses. I also want to add half of my, half of my wall thickness and we made that 0.25. So I'm going to say plus 0.125 and that will mark where my axis should go. I'll select my axis right there. So now that I've created an axis and I have a sketch and uh, the sketch is not visible now. So if you need to toggle sketch visibility, you can hit control shift K. K is in kangaroo, or you can also go to view and toggle sketch visibility from here. And of course this model is, uh, that menu looks like uh, professional and expert. So let's perform a helix and we'll revolve this sketch about this axis. We'll make this a height of eight. And I want this to be not a pitch rather, but a height in revolution. And I'll give this a revolution of one. And we'll say okay to that. Next thing I'd like to do is actually create a sketch on the XY plane. Let's project to sketch. We'll choose sketch one with maintained associate, associativity. And from here I can deactivate. We'll perform a revolve. And I'll select my axis that I've just created here. Great, so this is like a bottom wall that will retain the bottom of the can. Then we have this sort of helical wall that maintains the can's uprightness. Let's also create a mirror. We'll select this helical feature to mirror and my XY plane. From here, I'd like to pattern this. So let's go to linear pattern. And among my features, I can choose my uh, mirror, my helical boss, and also my revolve. For the path, I'll choose this axis down here. And of course, I want to space it by the can's diameter, 2.65, and I want to add one instance of wall thickness, plus 0.25 and that should do it. And there we are, so we'll say okay on that. And then I can mirror the pattern. <laughs> so we'll choose a mirror plane on XY, and there we are. And then I'd also like to mirror everything that I've done so far. So we'll continue to select my features. We'll choose our mirror plane here as the YZ. And there we have it. I'll go ahead and go isometric and save what we have so far. Next, I have some artifacts, right? You can see some artifacts that have uh, occurred just from the nature of the way that we've patterned things. And I'd like to get rid of all of them. But uh, Alibre makes this easy due to a feature that is available in professional and expert known as remove face. And uh, how this works is I'll select from here and I'll go ahead and not show pop-up on errors. Um, I just need to select all the faces that I wish to remove. And then I can click apply and they're gone. Now another uh, point that I'd like to make is this process may change based on your design intent. 
For example, I've removed this artifact. Perhaps I'd like to remove another artifact, right? And so we can select all these faces. And now I've removed two artifacts with one single remove face right here. Uh, so you can remove all of these faces with one single remove face. You don't have to click apply every time. And so the reason why I'm clicking apply every time is because when I go to remove multiple uh, of these features that I'm trying to get rid of, click here and click here, right? We've removed that one. And then I continue on to click some subsequent faces. You can see that each of these faces is recorded as face with a little star. And if I get too many of these features um, done and then I make a big mistake, it's hard to know what face that you wish to remove and what to keep and so on. So I tend to want to break this up into multiple features, but I can totally understand how other users would want to have a shorter history tree and have only one remove face for each of these. So it kind of depends on what you want to consider when you're doing this. A nice, simple, short history tree or removing all these at once. Another consideration is what if I make an update and change the number of patterns or change the model in some way? And some of these uh, features are no longer available. If that's the case, then the one remove face will break and you'd have to start all over again. But if I have these all divvied up as individual faces and one of these no longer exists and I update the model or after I update the model, then you uh, have a much simpler time of fixing that update. So here you can see, for instance, exactly what I was saying. I accidentally clicked this face and it's a little bit hard to know which one I clicked to remove this. Now I can simply say, clear all and start over. But it, had I clicked 50 faces prior to that, it would have been kind of challenging to, uh, to keep up with that. So I'll go ahead and clear out the rest of these faces. And that is how we can remove some of these artifacts. There we were able to remove all artifacts simply by using the remove face feature in a Libre Pro and Expert. Perhaps one of the last things that we'd wish to do is make a handle. And for that, I'll make a plane and we'll base it off of this plane and simply have it intersect that point there. Now I can sketch on my plane and we'll keep it real basic. I'll project this line and this line, maintain association, and make a reference figure. I'll go with the corner rectangle. And we'll make sure that we're coincident here. We'll give this a dimension of 0.5, and we're fully constrained. Next, I'll choose my XY plane. I'll choose a center rectangle. And I'll make sure that our center is vertical with the origin, just like that. I'll give this something like 0.65. Eh, that's a bit wide. 0.35. We'll give this something like 0.7. So it gets a bit bigger. I want to make sure that we're, our overall height is good. You know, if you're going to 3D print something or something like that, so we'll say 9.75 to the top of the handle. And I'll want to make sure that this is horizontal. We'll deactivate the sketch. And now we can choose loft from there to there. We're going to specify tangent and we're going to say something like, oh, I'll go with a magnitude of one and one, just so we get kind of a nice curvy handle. And if you wish to design it that way, that handle will probably be the only thing that needs 3D supports or 3D printed supports. We'll go ahead and mirror that. And 
and now we can fill it as we see fit. Again, I might say that uh, these edges should be more than 45 degrees or at minimum 45 degrees. And so as they are, that should be 3D printable without supports. If I were to add a fillet on the bottom of this, and we take a look, now we have an overhang, and so that would need supports. So fill it as you wish, but keep in mind that creating overhangs like this uh, could be a problem for supporting in 3D printing if you wish to print with an absolute minimum of supports. I'll go ahead and make my own version, and we'll see how it prints out. Well, hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe to the Libre channel and see you in the next one.